Hi, this is Andre. I want to talk about the insert function. This is a commission video courtesy of Mark Oswald, one of my Patreon supporters. So Mark, thank you very much for making this possible. The first thing we need to do is make a quick distinction between the insert button and the insert function. This is the insert button. It's the physical button on the front panel of the Echoplex. The insert function is accessed as an insert mode parameter value, and it's one of seven different insert modes you can have. So right now I have it set to insert, but there are six other possible insert functions or insert modes that you can select. There's sus, rehearse, replace, substitute, half speed, and reverse. So everything we're talking about in this video has to do with the insert function, which is accessed from the insert button, but the button can access a lot of different insert modes. So all of these different types of functions are accessed through the insert button, but we're only talking about one of those functions in this video. We're talking about the insert function, which is an insert mode of the insert button. Clear as mud? I certainly hope so. All right. In the most basic sense, the insert function expands the length of your original loop on a cycle by cycle basis. Let's review cycles very quickly. Here's an initial loop. As we've talked about with regards to multiply, cycles are essentially taking the original loop length and expanding it by even multiples of that original length. So right now, each of these multiples is what we call a cycle. The loop is now four times the original length. We started with the original cycle and then multiplied it out four times. Up until now, Cycles and multiples have basically been the same thing. There hasn't really been any reason in the video series to be talking about them as two different things. Now that changes. Mwah. I'm going to remultiply down to one cycle. And now I'm going to use the insert insert mode. I'm going to add a new cycle of material. So you can see now the loop is twice as long as it was. We've doubled it. We've added a second cycle, but we haven't duplicated the content of the original cycle. We've actually added new material in using the insert function. I'm going to add a few more cycles in with the same kind of idea. That kind of idea. So the insert insert function is going to expand the length of the loop. In its most basic unquantized state, it's going to start immediately at whatever point within the cycle you press, and then it's going to expand out for exactly one cycle length. Let's record an initial cycle. If I use the insert insert mode in its most basic sense, then you're going to hear that it gets cut off there. That's the rounding period. It didn't get added into the loop because I have round mode switched off. Let's get rid of that. Let's turn round mode to round. Let's record a new initial loop. And now let's use the insert function. And now you can hear the entire rounding period continue to overdub the material that was going into the loop. Let's talk about doing an unrounded insert. This is similar to an unrounded multiply in that it takes your entire loop, gets rid of any cycle divisions, immediately ends the loop, and creates one brand new loop from scratch. There's our initial cycle. Now we're going to do an unrounded insert, which means we're going to end insert with record.
let's do another one. That kind of idea. So as you can see, each time we do an unrounded insert, the entire loop is becoming one new cycle. We're getting rid of all the cycle distinctions because the nature of an unrounded function, whether it's unrounded insert or unrounded multiply, is that you're no longer expanding the loop on a cycle by cycle basis. You're breaking out of the cycle measurement system. Let's look at what happens when you end record with insert. Insert, and now we're getting new cycles. This is still the initial loop length that's being recorded, but now we're getting new cycles added in. It doesn't sound any different right now. If I were to add in new cycles, either with multiply or insert, it would make different sounds. The way that I use this particular function myself is to give me a visual readout of the content of the loop. In other words, I use the cycle display as a kind of visual timer to tell me when I'm getting close to the end of a particular loop. If you end multiply with insert, then you will start multiplying the new loop that you've just created with insert. Sounds more complicated than it is. Let's create a new loop. There we go. If you end a regular unquantized insert with overdub, that toggles back and forth between the overdub state. If we start our initial loop, right now we're not in overdub. If we end insert with overdub, we're going to go into overdub at the end of the insert. If we're in overdub when we do an insert, and then we end insert with overdub. Then we go out of being an overdub. Now let's talk about using quantization with the insert function. Let's come down here. We've turned quantize to cycle. Let's record an initial loop. Now, as we've talked about in the quantize video, quantize is going to delay the beginning of a function until the next cycle start point. So now you can see we're adding new cycles right at the very beginning of the current cycle coming up. That kind of idea. So it's a very clean sound. It's very easy to build on a cycle by cycle basis and still maintain the integrity of the cycles. If you have quantize off, then as soon as you use the insert function, you're dropping a new cycle in the middle of an old cycle. Which can be a cool effect, but it's a little harder to get a really strong rhythmic effect happening that way. But if we have quantize turned on, then it will add new cycles right at the beginning of the previous cycle. You can also do remultiply, just like you normally would with cycles. Here's an initial loop. And you can hear that I got the entirety of that overdub even after I press the button. If we look at round mode, it's actually off right now. So effectively, when you have quantize activated for the insert function, you're forcing it to always round the material. Let's look at the insert function if we have quantize set to eighth. I'm going to set eighths per cycle to something pretty low. Let's use it at four. Here's our initial loop. So now when I press insert, it's going to wait until it gets to the next one of those divisions before it activates the function.
And you can hear that unlike quantizing to cycle, quantizing to eighth does respect round mode. So round mode is off right now, which is why you're getting that burst of silence during what was the rounding period. If we turn round mode back on and do it, then you can hear the entire cycle has the content in there because we switched round mode back on. If we have quantize set to loop, then it's going to wait until it gets to the beginning of the entire loop before it starts doing inserts. This can create some pretty long effects. Let's check it out. So that's a crash course on the insert function in its most basic sense. It's a big subject and there are a lot of different permutations of the function, so there's going to be a few more videos that deal with this. This was volume one. Thanks again to Mark Oswald for making it possible. Thank you for tuning in. I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.